So as you guys know, there are lots of scientific papers out there, a lot of them very high quality and revolutionize the field of science, others not so much. And sometimes even I myself think about why some studies even exist. But of course I think there's value in any data you collect. It's better to know about something than to not know about it. So this article that we're about to look at is kind of on the border of that, so let's roll the clip. Ladies and gents, welcome back. I can't believe I'm reporting on this today. You may have heard that there's a difference between correlation and causation. That means that something could be happening simultaneously at the same time as something else. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're related in any way whatsoever. But that doesn't stop people from using their political opinion to guide their uh, interest into the science or statistical data anyway. Yeah, but as someone who just straight up denies certain fields of science, you'd be the last person I trust to know the difference between correlation and causation. But just because something is correlation without the causation doesn't mean those two points don't relate. A lot of people think that just because there's no causation, then the study or experiment entirely has no value and can be thrown out. But that's actually not what that means. There can be plenty of things that cause correlation and not causation that would be useful to know about, such as if both the measured values are the result of a third factor, which we'll see later that's exactly the case. Actually, for a layman, it's super easy to think that causation is this all-powerful metric that is more valuable than correlation, but that's actually not necessarily true. We have plenty of statistical models that specifically use correlation as a basis for prediction. The relationship between two things can tell us more, and there are models that can use correlation to determine causation. Basically, what I'm I'm trying to say is causation is not everything. I saw this article, uh, actually, I think it was a, a, a couple of days ago, uh, from Sunny Brook, and I thought it was funny, but I didn't know if it was worth sharing until I saw that, wow, global news has jumped on it. Anyway, what is this? COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy associated with increased risk of traffic crashes in Ontario. Study finds. <laughs> and I yeah, so this is why I personally would think, hmm, why green light a study like this? Because usually scientific studies have a specific reason for it. Private companies usually want to study something that they can eventually sell for profits. Academic institutions usually pick something that could potentially better the lives of the general public. That's why breast cancer has more research than heart cancer, because it's just significantly more common. So so when I see a study like this, I just get confused, because personally I don't see a particularly good reason in either field. Something like this wouldn't generate a profit, and it doesn't really have enough impact to get a grant for, I think. I don't know, it's weird. But regardless, it's there. And like I said, no data is entirely useless. So what can we draw from a study like this? If you like reading this, well, I'll, I'll give you another recommendation. It's, a, it's another book. It's called How to Lie with Statistics by Daryl Huff. I don't know that book, nor do I care, but why read a book about lying with statistics instead of just getting educated on statistics? Because simply by learning statistics, you'll learn how to interpret data and be able to see when someone is, quote, lying with statistics. But instead of doing that, you'd rather read a book that's not written by a statistician? Weird. That being said, lying in statistics is indeed a problem. You see non-scientists do it all the time, usually using data they didn't personally gather. Climate change skeptics is the main group that comes to mind, disgustingly distorting data to push a narrative. Anyway. Uh, Global News, just doing a bang up job here. Those who have not had a COVID-19 vaccine have an increased risk of being involved in a traffic crash in Ontario, a new study suggests. These are the suggestions made by the studies, public, uh, the, the, the writers of this study. Okay, so as I like to always say, we don't want to read secondary sources. Why read an article about a paper when you can read the paper itself? I know for ordinary people without a scientific background, it's easier to read a secondary article, but still, this is a pretty easy read, so I don't think there's much excuse here. To keep this video short, from the abstract, let's just read the background and conclusion. Coronavirus disease vaccine hesitancy is a reflection of psychology that might also contribute to traffic safety. We tested whether COVID vaccination was associated with the risks of a traffic crash. Conclusions, these data suggest that that COVID vaccine hesitancy is associated with a significant increased risk of a traffic crash, and awareness of these risks might help to encourage more COVID vaccination. So from the first line, we can see they're trying to see if these two things are psychologically linked, hence the word reflection of psychology. And a study like this could potentially increase motivation to get vaccinated, which is obviously good. It's not pointing fingers at anyone. It's not saying if you don't get vaccinated, you're going to get into a car accident. My takeaway here is obviously that people who don't get vaccinated have a certain mentality or personality, which in turn makes them more aggressive of drivers, thus more car accidents. Said investigators theorized 
that adults who neglect the recommendations may also neglect the basic road safety guidelines. So they started with the conclusion and then they just needed to find some data to get there. (laughs) That's how you science, right? That's how you science, folks. While clearly you know nothing about science then, this isn't starting with a conclusion. When you begin any study or experiment, you have to start with a hypothesis. But it's not just that, but you also start with a null hypothesis, which is just the opposite of your hypothesis. In simple terms, the goal is to prove which one of those is true. Just because the null isn't stated doesn't mean it's not there. For example, if we have drug X and I want to see if it can be used to shrink tumor masses, seeing if drug X does such a thing is a hypothesis. This would also be something you would bring up in an academic institution to seek for grants, and they approve or deny based on how promising or how useful such information would be in medicine. It is not a conclusion, it is a hypothesis. Same thing in this study we're looking at. The word theorized is very important here because the goal is to determine if that is true, not to fit data around that conclusion. But don't worry, I'm very familiar with starting with a conclusion and working backwards on the data because creationists do it all the time. But do not mix up a hypothesis and a conclusion. These data, that data, this data, suggests COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy is associated with a significant increased risk of traffic crash. However, this does not mean COVID-19 vaccination directly prevents crashes. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Rettelmeyer said, oh, because that's how you would, that's what you would infer from that, would you not? Instead, it shows how adults who do not follow public health advice may also neglect the rules of the road. Misunderstandings of everyday risk can cause people to put themselves in a grave danger. Now, there could be an, a, an opposite argument here. There could be a completely opposite argument here. People who did not want to get it maybe are more risk averse. Maybe they didn't want to take the risk of possible, um, well, the, the possible side effects, things that could happen uh, because, well, um, we've heard reports on these things. <laughs> and, well, the, some people are risk averse and they don't want to take a risk for uh, uh, with a medical inter- I'm being very careful about what I say here. Really? You really think that's the case? Don't get me wrong. Obviously, people who don't get vaccinated because they're worried about the side effects exist, but are they the majority? I've heard so much about vaccination conspiracies and straight up stupidity rather than a worry for side effects. And even worrying about side effects is a conspiracy theory depending on what is being spewed. For example, how the chances of any adverse effects involving autoimmunity is one in millions and you can be treated as long as you stay at the site for about 15 minutes after the shot. If you say anything more about the side effects, then you're just a conspiracy theorist or someone who just straight up denies science. Plus, this still falls under what is being said in the article. Misunderstanding of everyday risk can cause you to put yourself and others in danger. Here, misunderstanding the benefits and costs of receiving a vaccine is a mentality, one that possibly carries over to things like road accidents. If you don't see how beneficial vaccines are, you're also less likely to see the benefits of things like driving safer on the road. Of course, this study doesn't definitely conclude that, like most science papers usually there's more to be done here, such as peer reviewing and further investigations. So I wouldn't draw a definite conclusion here just yet, but the idea is still there and the possibility holds. It's not a causation relationship like what the article said, but the two factors could potentially be linked. Uh, Rettelmeyer said the authors don't want unvaccinated people to feel persecuted. Well, they already do. I'm sorry, but they this is actually making it worse. Okay, well, that's totally up to the individual reading the study and is also not for you to determine for others like you're trying to do here. That being said, data will always be data. It doesn't care if you feel persecuted or not, even if the scientists themselves don't want you to feel that way. When we developed all these medical treatments for cancer, did the data care about making the proponents of juicing feel persecuted? When science found out that detoxing is complete bullshit, did it care for the proponents of detoxing? Absolutely not. Science will always work to discover the truth and reality of the world. Whether or not you get your feelings hurt is not relevant to the progress of knowledge. Maybe the scientists who conducted the study will feel bad, but the science itself will never care. It's up to us to adapt and fit our lifestyles based on the discoveries of science, not to be stubborn about your own position. Because if you do that, then you're going to feel persecuted a lot, despite that not being the intention. Anyway, that being said, I still kind of feel this study was a little silly in the fact that it got green lit, since personally I don't see that much value in looking at vaccination status and traffic accidents, but that doesn't mean the results of the study aren't valid. Thanks for watching, that's the end of today's video. Shout out to the usual patrons, Fireshard, Alan Morton, Miss Fixit, and Edward Martin for the support on this channel. The holidays are coming up, so I don't know what my upload schedule is going to look like, but I'll see you soon.